What's up everybody? Evan, W9ZAW here. Today we're working on a battery box build for portable radio operation. Stick around and I'll show you how I put mine together. Here's a few examples of some boxes that I've built in the past. The one on the left there is a more of a go box than it is a battery box. It does have a lithium iron phosphate battery in it. It's a 12 amp hour and it's also got a VHF UHF radio built into it. So uh, that one's got some more capabilities compared to the bigger Apache case on the bottom right. Uh, that's probably my go-to for all of my parks on the air activations. I do uh, quite a bit of those and it's got a 20 amp hour uh, battery in it. Again, lithium iron phosphate. You can see there on the front panels. I'll zoom in here just a little bit. Uh, but we've got pretty much the same components. You've got a USB socket, a voltage gauge, and then a typical 12-volt uh, power port. Um, again, the one on the left, it also has um, the ability to take positive and negative wires directly to it. And then I'll kind of pan around the back here and show you the connections that I use um, for several different things. So I've got power poles on the left. Those are for the direct connection to the battery. And then what you see here on the right is a, um, a connector that I use to plug in um, the charger and the solar panels if I decide to go that route. So these are pretty much identical. A uh, little more options on this one. Again, it's a little bigger, but otherwise they're, uh, they're pretty much exactly the same. So that's what uh, we're going to be working on today. I'm going to show you how we do that and or at least how I do it. It may not be the uh, perfect way, but here's a bunch of stuff that you need. Um, we've got a battery there on the top. You can see the power pole uh, socket as well as the uh, connector there for the charger. We've got a few different other odds and ends, some nuts and bolts, heat shrink, and some tools, and of course a drill. So I'm going to put the camera down and let you see how I put these things together, and we'll go from there. All right, so here we go. We're going to get started. And this is the panel that I'm using for this particular one. It's a little bit smaller than the uh, the ones that I've got on the other boxes. And they make a whole bunch of variety of these things. You can get on Amazon or eBay. They're all over the place. Uh, this one's got a dual USB socket and a cigarette lighter output. So they're held on with these little plastic uh, lock terminals. Got to take those guys off um, and then pull these, these out. So set these aside. And you can see they've got four holes that you're going to mount them, uh, these plates with. And there's a little cutout right there. And that's going to be for the, the weather flap on here. So you can really put that either way. It doesn't matter. Uh, but basically what you want to do is get this thing centered up on your box, uh, roughly where you're going to want it. So you can kind of see there that uh, may not be 100% straight just yet, but it will be. So you figure out where you want it and... And then you're going to drill your, your first hole. Now, I've already done that uh, to help aid the uh, speed here on the camera. But I've got these little nuts and bolts. Now, these don't come with the kit. You can get these at uh, any of your um, home improvement stores. But these little panels, they come with the connectors. And uh, some of them even come with, with wiring harnesses to hook them all together. So makes it pretty simple. Uh, but go ahead and get the, uh, the first one started. see we got at least one of them held in there and now I'll take the time uh, to get this thing perfectly straight uh, or as straight as I can get it sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't and then I'm gonna drill my second hole and something I forgot to mention but it's worth noting Make sure you take the foam that comes inside of these boxes out before you start drilling in there. Because once you go through the plastic, that drill will catch that foam and it'll tear it up pretty quick. So 
Uh, take the foam out. You're going to have to take it out anyway to get it to fit around the battery. So now I've got these two guys in there. And it looks pretty good. Pretty straight. You can see. And I'll go ahead and open this up now. Turn it that way. And you just got little little nuts that are gonna go on the other side of these. You don't gotta go too crazy tighten these things up, just so they're snug and I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and then I'll show you uh, the next step. All right, so we're back now. We got all our holes drilled, all our screws and tightened and uh, that panel is now in place. So the next step that I, and this is probably not the, the most scientific way to do this, but it is what it is and it works for me. I've got an inch and, a eighth, inch and an eighth uh, spade bit here. And what I try to do to drill these holes is I, I kind of eyeball it. And I get about as close as I can, at least it looks to be the closest into the center of this um, panel. And as long as you're pretty close and take it nice and slow, you'll be fine. So get going. See, maybe you can see what's going on there. Let's see. There we go. out of the way I see you need to clean it up but nice hole it's the right size and you can open it up here now here's our socket that dude slides right in there just like that and there you go so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and we'll be right back uh, to start working on the uh, the power input side. All right, so we got this half of it ready to rock. Get your power pole ports in there, and then over here, there's USBs and voltage gauge in there. So now, we're gonna head on over to this side of the case. Uh, make sure you get your battery. Test fit it inside. you're going to have the proper amount of spacing to run your wiring and the back side of these connectors. You don't want to put it uh, where it's obstructing the, the battery and you can't get your, uh, your part in there. So the next thing we're going to put in here now is this is the charging port that I use. And I've got a lithium iron phosphate charger that's um, the male side of this and it plugs directly into that. So this will get hardwired into the battery, and this can also uh, take solar. So I've got it marked already where I want it to go. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use the same inch and eighth drill bit. In she goes. There's the hole. Feed this guy in through here. And you can see that'll mount like that. So now I gotta drill a few holes for uh, this connector. Set that guy up on end. I know you can't see that. All right, guys. We just got a drill bit that same size as these little screws. I'm try and get this thing pretty nice and lined up in the middle.
All right, get the rest of these screw holes drilled and the nuts and bolts all on, and I'll be back and show you what it looks like in just a few. All right, so we're back now. You can see that we got the power input supply mounted, and it took a couple minutes. Got all my wiring uh, figured out, lined out how it's going to go in here. Got a plan. Wires are going to kind of feed around over on the top. Um, depending on what you're going to be running off of this, I would highly suggest you put inline fuses in the, uh, the power wires. Um, I'm going to be using this uh, primarily for a Yaesu FT891, and I have a fuse at the radio. So um, I'm not overly concerned with it. Um, you can see there's the power port uh, that I'll be running the radio off of. So it should be okay. Um, these other inputs are very low power, very low amps, and there's really no way that it can short out in there, but it probably wouldn't be a good idea or be a bad idea uh, to go ahead and put that protection in. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, route these wires and bring you back here in just a few minutes. And we'll show you how that looks all uh, buttoned up and then um, we'll wrap this project up. All right, so there it is, foam's in there, and this thing's pretty much all buttoned up, and it closes up nice and tight. See, we've got some charging to do on that battery, but uh, yeah, we'll throw her on the charger and then give her a shot. So thanks for sticking around. I hope this helps some folks, uh, maybe give them an idea of um, you know what to do. And this is a, uh, a critical part to be able to get out and do portable operations got to have a power supply so this thing's really nice and small um, probably would give you oh maybe two or three hours of runtime at about 50 to 65 uh, watts on a hf rig so plenty for uh, a short parks on the air activation and then if you know you want to go with a bigger route you got uh, you got one like this and this is this is a uh 20 amp hour on that guy. So appreciate everybody. Have a good one and we will talk to you soon.